you know, I'm of mixed background. What am I supposed to mark on an application? Am I supposed to mark multiple boxes? And plus, mark if you black. are painting people yeah. as an oppressor, if you're white, that's and a then terrible saying thing to that tell you're oppressed. Well, it's the truth because you believe color, in affirmative action. So I said, mark black. If you're a then, student, I, I'm, in a, I'm an interracial relationship, so I can speak to this. I have a son that's half white and a son that's half black and a daughter that's half white and half black. Okay. They're going to mark black because I know that there are people like you at the universities who will say, well, because this person is black, I'm just going to let them in. No, That's they're going to mark black because they're black. Well, they're <laughs> half black and half white. They're, 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 they're both, right? So it is true. You overlook yes, interracial students. Right, so you overlook, <laughs> you overlook <laughs> interracial students. But so why? what do you mean? Why are you saying, That's, yeah, they're going to mark black because they're society. So the answer is, if you, you can't, I mean, you can mark both. Can you mark both? I don't know if you can. Yes. What are you going to look at that applicant as a little bit less because they're half white? How do you guys figure that out? How they look at it is, again, holistically, holistically ah, across a number word. of different I factors. I love me a buzzword. Holistically and racial consciousness. Oh, yeah. Reverse discrimination. A it's buzzword. not reverse discrimination. It's just discrimination. discrimination. It's just racism if you're judging people on the basis of their skin color. I don't know why this is so difficult. I mean, you have to go to through an extraordinary amount of school. You ha almost have to have a PhD to not be able to see them. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope all's good wherever you are. In this video, we're going to watch the lovely Candace Owens debate a race hustling intellectual. Now, as you saw in the opening clip, this man referred to himself as a black man. He's indeed biracial, so I'm going to call him a black man because he referred to himself that way. But just for a little bit of history, uh, and I won't touch on this too long, but pre-American Civil War, you know, when race was a big issue, when slavery was still going on, biracial people were always referred to as black because a lot of the racist white people didn't want to taint the white race. So they wouldn't call them biracial, they wouldn't call them white, they would call them black. Now, they might give them a little bit of preferred treatment, they might work in the house instead of the, in the field, but they would definitely not treat them as an equal. Which is why today, if somebody, you know, is biracial, I tend to call them biracial, uh, but this guy referred to himself as black, so I'm going to call him black as well. Now, I'm going to stop rambling. Let's get into it. I want to welcome conservative author and TV host Danielle D'Souza Gill and distinguished professor of education at San Diego State University, Dr. Luke Woods. Yeah. Both of you. Um, now, let me start with you. Is it possible for white people to be discriminated against because they are the majority and discrimination involves power. Is it possible? Absolutely. It, it is unequivocally possible. It happens all the time. This actually happens not only in specific instances, but this happens in a systemic way on our most elite college campuses. And I would also say that this is happening um, not just in education, but in the workplace. Well, is it justified, though? Because if, if there has been disparity and if there has been discrimination, if there have been uh, minorities that have been excluded for years and years and years and years, is this the way to start to bring some balance and diversity back to those universities and workplaces? Absolutely not. Affirmative action has been going on for over 50 years, so this has been happening for a long time. And even now, we've actually seen that it's gotten worse in the sense that race relations are so poisonous, and many people on college campuses um, actually feel like, because of all of this that's happening, they feel like they're being pitted against each other. Dr. Phil said there obviously would be wrong, right? You don't fix discriminations that happened in the past by discriminating against the opposite group in the future or to level the playing field or fix that problem. You want to get to a point where you're race neutral. That should be the goal. Level the playing field, fix the game, but you don't go and just discriminate against other group or give preferential, preferential treatment to one group because of what happened in the past. And for anybody out there on the left that thinks that you cannot be racist towards white people, because I know, I know that exists. People do think that way. For the last 12 years of my life, I've been uh, traveling. I spent most of my time in Asia, but I've not lived full time in North America. I traveled to South America, I've been through Europe, and I've been to Africa, and trust me, there are countries in the world, now most people everywhere I've been in the last 12 years have been inherently very good and nice, but trust me, there are some places that you can go and there are some people that really, really dislike white people because of the color of their skin. Yes, this happens. Let's get back to it. Doctor, what do you think? Well, I think um, I would very respectfully disagree. Um, I certainly don't think that uh, white people are disadvantaged in college admissions. In fact, I would say it is the exact opposite, which is why 
there are policies and practices in place now to try to alleviate the historical burden. It's like um, if you ever played Monopoly before, right? Imagine like you have a person who's playing Monopoly and they get to go around multiple times, right? And then like halfway through the game, someone gets to enter into the game. And then because they get a turn, right, then the accusation is, well, somehow that game is unfair. Uh, you get what the guy's trying to say about the Monopoly game? I get this example, but in my opinion, he's totally wrong. The solution, say, with his Monopoly board example, if the white person has a go around the board twice and the black person starts off after that, is what he's trying to say here, the solution to that is not to take the black person and have him go around the board four times. The solution is to fix the game and make it race neutral so that's equal across the board for everybody. Like, if these people really cared about minorities, they would look at how affirmative action really negatively impacted the Asian community. We should be looking towards a race neutral future for all of these things. Race shouldn't even be a consideration when you're applying for a university. There shouldn't be a box for that on the form. Uh, the kind of accusation, what we'd say is reverse racism, uh, we really just view it as what we call race lighting. Race lighting is what happens when gaslighting is racial. And essentially, if you look historically, colleges and universities have prioritized admissions for students who are white. Why is that? When you admit a student, it's oftentimes based upon your grades, high school grades, and your test scores, ACT and SAT, which are being phased out due to COVID-19. But if you think about it, the SAT and ACT have historically measured access to resources, the neighborhood that you grow up in. It is not a measure of a student's drive, a student's motivation. It is really a measure of their access. And ultimately, we know that when things measure access, they really measure um, white privilege. Candace. This guy has clearly made it in life. He's a doctor, he's on Dr. Phil, and he's a black man. So why are we teaching young black kids, young Hispanic kids, that you're at a disadvantage because of the color of your skin, that it's gonna be harder for you, there's be barriers put in your way. Why are we teaching them that? Instead, what we should be teaching them is no matter what color your skin is, you can make it in life. You're gonna to have to have delayed gratification, you're gonna to have to work hard, you're gonna be disciplined, you're gonna to have to sacrifice. I don't care who you are, I don't care what color your skin is, if you wanna be successful in any field, have your own businesses, at a high level, you're gonna to have to at some point sacrifice and be disciplined and all these things. But you can make it no matter what, there's black people in Hispanic level represented at all levels of any field that have made it on their own merit, not because somebody said, oh, here you go, uh, because the color of your skin, we're going to give you a pass. Now, those people are there too, but at all levels, there's people of all skin colors that have made it based on the fact that they deserve to make it. So this is not the message that we should be teaching little kids, the next generation. Are we compromising standards yes. if we do that because we haven't fixed the problem down the line? That's correct. It is The, the policies are harmful also to the people that they purport to help. Um, and we have all of the evidence there to look at. Uh, when you artificially place a black American into a school in which they do not belong based on their knowledge, it doesn't mean that they go on to get A's. In fact, there was a black adjunct professor, you guys have definitely heard of him, Dr. Thomas Sowell, uh, who was teaching at Cornell University and he found majority of the black American students that were there were on academic probation. Now, these students were some of the smartest in the nation, but because they were artificially placed amongst their peers at Cornell University, they were failing on academic probation. These policies have never helped black Americans. It's just basically policies that are put in place to make people feel good, right? I feel like I'm doing something when in fact I'm actually creating harm. You either know the answers or you don't. When you say, hey, we have black students at a particular school who aren't performing at that school as well, the immediate assumption that you're making is, well, maybe it's because they're not smart enough, they're, they're not good enough or they don't belong here. Whereas it could be about the experience that they're having at that institution. Professors who believe that they're not intelligent enough, that they don't have the capability to do the work, that they see them as criminals, deviants, dangerous, up to no good, or they talk about them with the they statements. They're lazy. They don't care. They don't really belong here. Uh, you're, they're you're only here for the financial be, I'm aid. giving you actual facts. No, right? I'm giving so you can, actual facts based upon extensive research that's been done. You can say, well, maybe they just don't feel good, um, but that's not the case. I mean, I went, I went to university. I did not feel good, right? I, I didn't pull the best grades in high school, probably got into a better university than I should have gotten into based on my performance in high school. It wasn't because of my feelings. It's because I wasn't focused on it. And that we're talking about a cultural problem, what's going on back at home, as was in my circumstance. And none of that is because of institutionalized policy. Um, it almost seems like you guys were 
refuse to accept that, you know, black students aren't performing well, you feel like you have to have this burden of responsibility when, in fact, if you actually wanted to help, you would look at the facts, re-examine the fact that it's not helping anybody, it's not helping black Americans to artificially place them into universities, and you'd make effective change. With affirmative action, it didn't really matter what criteria they looked for. As soon as race got looked at, white people and Asian people were discriminated against way more than their Hispanic and black counterparts. And it seems to be that it wasn't because of social economic status. It was because these are the races that the left, for some reason, feels bad for. And that is a crock of crap, to be honest with you. We should be at a race-neutral level. Nobody should be discriminated against because of the color of their skin. I'm telling all of you, man, if you're out there and you have a biracial kid, when they're going to fill out these applications for the universities, tell them to mark black. Because there are some people out there, like this professor here, that are going to look at that and give them preferential treatment. And you got to feel a little bit for the Asian American community, right? Because we all just accept, because of the drive that is in that community, and they have such a high standard of excellence when it comes to academics, that sometimes they've had to score, and this is documented, but twice as high as like black students in order to get into these universities. We don't... We discriminate against whites, we discriminate against Asians when it comes to affirmative action, but for some reason, the left, we should feel bad or pity the black community and the Hispanic community, and why? If you're a Hispanic person or a black person, you wouldn't want that. You want to get in on your own merits. The last thing you want is somebody to deny you or let you in based on the color of your skin. It should be based on your character and your academic scores at all times. But you're making the assumption that black students are academically inferior and they're not. No, they're you some are of our actually, most like, that's, brilliant that's what, that's students the, that's that we the have. Basic, no, 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 that you are making the assumption that they are inferior. You it just said that they don't belong there. Policies. <laughs> I'm talking about the students that are based on the policies that you are defending right now, saying that we should have these policies that let them into these universities, not based on their skill set, but based on the color of their skin. So you are assuming that they are inferior. Comedian Tyler Fisher claims he has been mm. turned down by three agencies because they said they just weren't looking for white men to book at this time. Tyler, thanks for being here. Thank you, thank you. I do I identify as a Latino female now, so uh, <laughs> just adjust my pronouns. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I've, I've been in the entertainment business for 17 years, and I, I think what we're not talking about is children right now. Thank God, I had about five years where this was not happening, where race was not pounded over your head. The, the, this is Professor destroying Lickham people's said. lives. Yeah. You know, the manager that told me, I can't work with you because you're white, he was, he was a pawn, you know? And so it's so sad because I feel so bad for kids who won't have that chance. They're gonna go, oh, I'm told I'm white, so I'm not gonna go for it. You know, what would you say to a five-year-old or a six-year-old, no matter what their race is? Should you, like, what would you, what would you actually tell them? You know, should you give your job up? And let me ask you directly, do you think it was justified for me to be told we can't represent you. You don't have the chance to now compete for jobs because you're white. Yes or no? Was that okay or was that not okay? I think that what is described yes by no. you. Don't give me your little well, no, like, let me bubble finish. wrap. What, yes what is described no. by you that you can't get, get that job because you're white does not sound right. The fact that an actor or actress is going through this, and like that guy had to say, that was the right answer. He had to say it. Like, don't give us the spin around, buddy. Don't give us the long answer, just say is it right or wrong. He said the correct answer. It is wrong for anybody, again, to be judged or not get a job because of the color of their skin. Now, if this guy's applying to, you know, auditioning, I mean, to be an actor in the next Roots movie and they're looking for a bunch of black guys, yeah, maybe not, okay? Maybe that would be silly, but to tell me that a white straight guy can't play a white gay guy is ludicrous, or vice versa. I don't care, it's all fake anyway, it's a movie. I don't care if a straight man plays a transgender on screen. The transgender community, I'm sure, would go nuts about that. But look, try going out in the world and finding an Academy Award winning transgender actor. I doubt there's any. I don't follow the stuff that closely, but I doubt that would be easy to find. Why are we getting so offended about movies? We don't even make comedy movies anymore, but really, because everybody's so easily offended by everything. We, we remake all the good all movies, and we remake them. If it's a white man, we make it a woman, maker of a different race, and make her gay. 
it's such a lazy way to make a movie. We've gotten to a point in society now that it's just... Like, it's a clown world. It's, it's a total clown world, what the left has done uh, to society. I did a show the other day, and they said, are you doing the next show? And I said, yeah. The guy said, I didn't know you were gay. He said, this is a gays only show. And so, that's why Hollywood sucks right now, by the way, because they're not hiring based on talent. What do we do about heart surgeons, airplane pilots? Like, how far do we want to go with this? Do you want the best heart surgeon, or do you want somebody who you think may have had it bad as a kid, or maybe their great-great-grandfather? I mean, this is, it's ridiculous. I think it's important yeah. <clears throat> to state how affirmative action actually harms everybody involved. So when you put a black student on a campus or put them in a job and you've given them, uh, you know, preferential treatment in order for them to be there, you've actually robbed them of knowing they've gotten an opportunity based on their own merit. So they're questioning themselves and their place in the environment. And for all the non uh, people of color who are surrounding them, they now get to look at any person of color and go, I don't know whether or not you got this job based on merit or based on preferential treatment. And I know this to be true because I'm a biracial woman who has those thoughts now because of the culture that we're living in. She's 100% right. People want to make it on their own merit. Okay? I don't want to get a job based on the fact that I have a connection or I'm white or something of the sort. No, I had a great career. I was very blessed in my life. I was able to travel the world. I've started multiple businesses. I've, I've, I have money, I have properties. I'm, I'm very blessed. But I've made it on my own merit. Sure, everybody gets a little bit of help along the way. Nobody does it 100% by themselves. But you have to teach people how to work hard. You have to teach people about delayed gratification. That's a big one. You have to teach people that they're gonna to have to sacrifice. But at any level of any industry, especially stuff like, like medicine or like a fireman or a police officer, you want the best person for the job. I don't care if the guy is black or Muslim or Indian or Asian. When it comes to being a police officer, I want the best guy for the job or best woman for the job if that was the case. I just want the best person. That's it. I don't really care about anything else. That doesn't bother me. Best person based on scores, based on character, based on if they've passed the test properly, whatever you know, characteristics are needed for whatever job you're applying for, that should be it. Race, again, with anything shouldn't be a factor. Again, if you're applying to be Malcolm X or Martin Luther King in a movie, sure, absolutely, be a black guy. No one cares. That's the obvious stuff. But for the other things, nursing, like, who cares? I don't care if my nurse is, is Asian or Indian or white or Native American. It doesn't matter to me. But I want to know that she made it on her own merit. If she's going to be, you know, taking care of me or, or my children or someone in my family, that's what I want. Not somebody who got, you know, pushed ahead because of the color of their skin. We live in a clown world in 2023. This stuff, uh, yeah, it pisses me off. Thank you for watching, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Please, if you're still here at this point, smash that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Help it grow, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.